my chamber window lies a book. Bring it hither to me in the orchard. I hear already, sir. I know that. But I'll have the Hanson here again. <laughs> I do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviors to love, will, after he hath laughed at such shallow follies in others, become the argument of his own scorn by failing in love. And such a man as Claudius. I have known when there was no music with him but the drum and the fife. Now, had he rather hear the tabor and the pipe? I have known when he would have walked ten mile a foot to see a good armor. Now will he lie ten nights awake, carving the fashion of a new doublet. <laughs> He was wont to speak plain and to the purpose, like an honest man and a soldier. Now is he turned oratory. His words are a very fantastical banquet. Just so many strange dishes. <coughs> May I be so converted and see with these eyes? I cannot tell. I think not. I, I will not be sworn, but love may transform me to an oyster. <laughs> But I'll take my own part. Till he hath made an oyster of me, he shall never make me such a fool. One woman is fair, yet I am well. Another is virtuous, yet I am well. Another wise, yet I am well. But till all these graces be in one woman, one woman shall not come in my grace. Rich she'll be, that's certain. <laughs> Wise, or I'll none. Virtuous, or I'll never cheapen her. Fair, or I'll never look on her. <laughs> Mild, or come not near me. A noble, or not I for an angel. Of good discourse, an excellent musician, and her hair shall be... Uh, what color it please God. <laughs> Prince and Monsieur Love. <laughs> I will hide me in the harbor. <coughs> Come, shall we hear this music? Yea, my lord. How still the evening is, as if hushed on purpose. Grace Harmony. <laughs> See you where Benedict and Tim himself? Oh, very well, my lord. Come, Balthazar. We'll hear that song again. Oh, good, my lord. Do not tax so bad a voice to slam the music any more than once. It is a witness still of excellency to put a strange face on his own perfection. I pray thee, sing, and let me woo no more. Because you speak of wooing, I shall sing. Since many a wooer doth commence his suit to her, he think not worthy. Yet he woos, yet will he swear he will. <coughs> now pray thee, come. Or, if thou wilt hold longer argument, do it in notes. Note this before my notes. There's not a note of mine that's worth the noting. Why, these are very crotchets that he speaks. Notes, notes, forsooth, and no thing. Now the divine air. Now is his soul ravished. Is it not strange that sheep's guts should hail souls out of men's bodies? <laughs> well, I'm hard for my money when all is done. Sigh, no more ladies. Sigh, no more. Sigh, no more. Sigh, no more. Sigh, no more. ever. One foot in sea. <laughs> one on shore. Do one thing. Constant, never. <laughs> then sigh not so, but yet you go and be you, life and body. Then <laughs> learning all your sounds of woo.
chamber window the best I can. Right? Do so. Farewell. <laughs> Come here, Leonardo. What was it you told me of today that your niece, Beatrice, was in love with Senor Benedict? <laughs> <laughs> so dope on Signor Benedict, whom she hath in all outward behaviors seemed ever to abhor. It's possible? Uh, Since the wind in that court? <laughs> By my troth, my lord, I cannot tell you what to think of it, but that she loves him with an enraged affection. It is past the infinite of thought. Maybe she doth but counterfeit. Faith, like enough. Oh, God, counterfeit. There was never counterfeit came so near the life of passion as she discovers it. How? What effects of passion shows she? <coughs> Faith the hook well, this fish will bite. Well, what effects, my lord? Oh, she will sit you. You heard my daughter tell you how. She doth indeed. How? How, pray you? <laughs> you amaze me! <laughs> I would have thought her spirit had been invincible against all assaults of affection. <laughs> I would have sworn it had, my lord, especially against Benedict. I should think this a goal, but that the white bearded fellow speaks it. The knavery cannot sure hide himself in such reverence. <laughs> <laughs> he hath taken the infection. Hold it up. Hath she made her affection known to Benedict? No, and swears she never will. That's her torment. So says your daughter. Uh, Shall I, says she, who hath so often countered him with scorn, write to him that I love him? This says she now when she's beginning to write to him. For she'll be up twenty times in the night, and there she will sit in her smock till she hath written a sheet of paper. My daughter tells us all. Now you talk of a sheet of paper. I remember a pretty jest your daughter once told us. <laughs> when she had written it and was reading it over, she found Benedict and Beatrice between the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> she tore the letter into a thousand halfpence, railed at herself for being so immodest as to write to one she knew would flout her. I measure him, says she, by my own spirit, for I should flout him if he writ to me. Yea, though I love him, I should. Then, down upon her knees she falls, weeps, sobs, beats her heart, tears her head and prays and curses. Oh, sweet Benedict, God give me patience. <laughs> My daughter says so, and the ecstasy has so much overborne her that my daughter is sometimes afeard she'll do a desperate outrage to herself. It is very true. <laughs> it were good that Benedict knew of it as some other, if she were not discovered. To what end, my lord? He would make but a sport of it and torment the poor lady worse. And he should, if were an off to hang him. She is an excellent sweet lady, and out of all suspicion, she is virtuous. And she is exceeding wise. In everything but loving Benedict. Oh, my oh. Lord. <laughs> Wisdom and love combating in so tender a body, we have ten proofs to one that uh, blood hath the victory. I am sorry for her, as I have just caused, being her uncle and her guardian. Oh, I would have she bestowed this dotage on me. I would adopt all other respects and made her half myself. I pray you. Tell Benedict of it and hear what he'll say. Were it good, think you? Hero thinks surely she will die. For she says she will die if we love her not. And she will die if we make her love her not. And she will die. <laughs> Rather than make one breath against her accustomed crossing. She does well. If she should make tender of her love, tis very possible he'll scorn it. For the man, as you know all, hath a contemptible spirit. <laughs> He is a very proper man. He had indeed a good outward happiness before God, and in my mind, exceeding wise. He does indeed show some sparks that are like it. <laughs> I take him to be valiant. As Hector, I assure you. Well, I am sorry for your niece. Shall we go seek Benedict to tell him of her love? Never tell him, my lord. Let her wear it out with good counsel. Nay, that were impossible. She may wear out her heart first. <laughs> Come, my lord, dinner is ready. What do you want? If you do not dote on her upon this, I'll never trust my expectation. 
Let the same net be spread for her, and that must your daughter and her gentlewomen carry. The sport will be when they hold one an opinion of another's dotage. And no such matter, that's the scene that I would see, which would be merely a dumb show. <laughs> Let's send her to call him into dinner. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> 